Thanks for tuning in, it's Chippy from umcportal.com here and uh, in this video I'm going to show you something new actually that I don't usually really cover, it's uh, a mini PC, it's the Intel NUC NUC, next unit of computing, but before I do that, just a couple of things to mention, um, sorry for the uh, yeah, the lack of videos in the last uh, month really it's been a quiet month there hasn't been much uh, released uh, I tested all the 18-inch Windows tablets and uh, recently the Dell Venue Pro 11 or Venue 11 Pro the Bay Trail very interesting product um, but last week um, the HP Pavilion 11 X2 was brought to my attention which is a, um, a fanless Core i5 tablet and docking station very similar to the Venue 11 Pro and was offered 599 in the US recently so that makes it a pretty interesting product because the the keyboard which is included in the package has an extra uh, 20 watt hour battery and bringing the whole lot up I think to about 50 watt hours 22 watt hours plus 28 watt hours in the tablet so really interesting and lo looks like really good value as well so that might be coming in for a test of course the Acer uh, Switch S10 was launched, or the Switch 10. Um, quite an interesting product, but a little bit disappointed that it wasn't higher end. We're at the point in this year now where we need to be raising the bar on the Windows tablets, um, or going in with a super cheap product. Now, of course, this Acer product will be pretty cheap. It will be competing with the Acer with the Asus T100, but that T100 is still popular and has a massive community around it so i'm not sure quite how the switch uh, s10 will do uh Acer, asus could drop the price of that at any time considering it's a five month old product that wouldn't surprise me if they did that but anyway so there's a couple of things that are, are coming up um but let's get into this intel uh, NUC. so what am i going to do with this of course it's a, it's a mobile computer it's a very lightweight very low power uh, and silent fanless um, um, desktop computer, mini PC really, um, which has got the Baytrail M processor inside. And this is the N2820. Um, the recent one is the N2830, which has a slightly bigger, slightly faster clock and supports the Intel Media SDK a bit better. But this is still an interesting product. I'll show you around the product right now. So we're looking at the DN2820 FYKH here. Um, this is a kit. So although this comes with CPU, it doesn't come with memory and it doesn't come with, uh, with a drive. So those are the two things you'll need to drop in afterwards. It does come with a Wi-Fi card inside though. And, uh, and you'll see on the connectors and around the box that it's also got an infrared receiver on it built in. So of course that makes it really interesting for home theater PC. Um, this is an aluminium block, really looks quite nice. Let's take the uh, let's take the plastic off here because it. Uh, I want to see if that's matte or, or uh, glossy. What sort of material it is? That's a nice glossy finish. I really, really hope that that is somehow a little bit scratch resistant. Come on, where's the rest of it? <laughs> let's just take that off there, so you can see it in all its glory. Hmm, I got a feeling that's going to be a little bit scratch sensitive at the moment. It looks gorgeous, but um, you know that plastic, unless it's really good quality, it's going to scratch. On off switch on the top there. Let's take you around the device. So it's a, a heat output there. I think this is fan, so I'll double check for you there. Heat input at the bottom, heat output at the top. Also, heat input there as well. Uh, gigabit Ethernet. It's a Realtek uh, card, I believe. A Realtek a module, eight full HDMI, DC in. This is a 12 volt DC in. That's interesting. Solar projects, perhaps. Car powered. Uh, a couple of USB ports, and I think one of them is USB three, and one is USB two. Um, there's ah, the USB three is at the front, so there's the two USB twos at the back, and at the front you've got the uh, infrared receiver. I think receiver. I don't think it's a transmitter as well, so I don't think you can control. I don't think you control uh, can control uh, consumer IR devices with it. Um, or is that the point? I don't know. Maybe it is a transmitter. I'll double check for you. Um, weighs, uh, ooh, I don't know, how much does that weigh? 500, 600 grams? Difficult to tell, really, but uh, pretty light anyway. Just having a look at the specs here, see if I can see uh, how much it weighs, but it doesn't say. In the box, you've got uh, oh sticker. 
you've got uh, ah okay your instruction kit here ah a visa mounting plate so then go on the back of a TV and inside here we've got a set of screws so remember there's no disc in this one and the nice thing about Baytrail M is that it supports a SATA interface SATA 3 so we've got a US we've got uh, all sorts of oh, those are the European these are all adapters good so it's just kind of a global package we've got here there's the rather boring looking wall wart and that's it in the box so pretty nice so just to tell you that there's um, another version of this uh, if you have a look on the bottom just want to show you this uh, where is it this version number here let's see, can get that into focus here this version number here ends in 101 and that's one of the early versions of this device the later versions actually have the N2830 CPU, CPU in it uh, which is a little bit more powerful and also has a little bit more um, video encode decode capability enabled on it as well so if you're really really into high-end uh, video encoding and decoding then that might be uh, worth waiting for the 2830 version but this is the 2820 version so what I'll do now is I'll, uh, I'll just pull this apart we'll have a look uh, inside so just undoing the four screws uh, on the bottom there gives you access to the disc that looks like a, a nice height nine millimeters at least there so you're not going to need a um, seven millimeter uh, disc and um, I'll probably drop um, I've got a um, my digital SSD BP4 that I'll probably drop in there an SSD so in order to keep the power down keep it as quiet as possible and make it as fast as possible we don't want to bottlenecks. Let's uh, drop an SSD in that. Um, I'll do that uh, on another video. Does this actually come out now? Okay, I'm going to just pull this off here. Um, I need to just undo. Well, it looks like I need to just undo that cable there. But I think maybe I can do it anyway. Probably should pull that cable header off. Right, let's zoom in and I'll, uh, I'll show you around uh, what's going on inside here. So making sure everything's in focus. There's the, um, it's an Intel Wi-Fi module there. Um, but obviously you could take that out and drop in something else. Single DDR3 memory slot down there. A couple of headers. I don't think there's any kind of like internal USB headers or anything like that. That's pretty much it. So what you could do. I'm just assuming that's a PCIe, mini PCIe uh, uh, slot. There you could take that out, drop in um, like a mini PCIe um, SSD, possibly if all the uh, interface is supported on that one. It looks pretty tidy. Obviously no fan there. The um, CPU obviously uh, underneath there. So if you just pop out the uh, IR window there, what you can do, if you're careful, is to um, slide the actual uh, casing off to expose. You know, it makes it a little bit easier to work on. There's a couple of screws on the main board, but what I think you'll have to do is. Yeah, I'm not sure if it comes completely apart. It must come completely apart at some point. Um, but there it is. I think that top will come on, come away. You'll probably be able to pop the corners off by going through the inside. But well, that's it. So um, there's a the nice bit of machined aluminium. There's the drive bay. And the bottom there and you obviously no fans at all on that so I'll put that together and I'll drop a let's see if I can just drop a disc in for you now and show how that uh, how that all goes together so I haven't got an SSD here so I'm just going to slot in a, um, a Western Digital SATA drive there 500 uh, gig drive and the The screw holes there on the side and I assume in the packet we've got the right screws so 
so don't close it up yet. I just need to put that memory module in. I've got a two gig, uh, I don't know where this came from. Probably something I upgraded to, oh yeah, from my old Acer V5 that I upgraded to four gigs. There's a two gig module that's gone in there. So we're ready to go, actually. There's a, there is an operating system on this drive. It's, uh, again, from the Acer V5 and AMD base device, so it's not going to boot, but we'll, we'll switch it on and we'll see whether it gets past post and uh, just check that it's all working. So there's a reasonably long cable on the, on the adapter there. Take that off. Choose your adapter. In this case, I'm in Germany. And um, it just slots in like that. So, power, HDMI. Yep, at least I can hear the, the hard drive. Is that monitor on? Monitor should be on. So as you can see, it didn't work. Um, so I spent a couple of hours uh, yesterday evening, it's now the, the following day, taking apart ultrabooks and bits and pieces to try and find another memory module because um, I guess it's quite quite um, useful that that's happening happened because you need to be aware that you need 1.35 volt so dim DDR3 L RAM rather than the 1.5 volt uh, RAM modules that you get uh, on maybe slightly older DDR3 capable sodium laptops so um, what I had done is I'd taken one out of where, where did I have that? It was an upgrade, an old upgrade stick that apparently from Samsung should run at 1.35 volts, but it wasn't working. I this literally this morning butchered the old Acer V5, took the RAM module out of that, and it's now booting okay. Um, I also have got the Runcore BP4. Again, this is a slightly older, but still very good 400 megabytes a second read-write um, SATA 3 yeah, SSD. Um, and the other thing to note is there is a fan inside. So underneath here, sorry, on top actually, is a small fan. Now, um, I don't know how it's gonna be regulated. On boot up, it's really quite quiet, about as loud as a hard disk. Um, so that's not going to upset anyone. Um, it's a bit of a shame it's not fanless. I really was hoping for that, and I'm, I bet you could make it fanless with some tweaking. But um, uh, we'll see how that goes uh, under load because uh, if that starts to ramp up, you really don't want that next to your ear on a desktop. I would say we'll see on the back of a P on the back of a TV as uh, a media center. No problems at all. Absolutely no problems at all. In fact. That's probably what I'll be doing with this because my old Xbox 360, which is the noisiest media center in the world, is going to get replaced by, by this probably. Um, good. So let me just show you that it's uh, booting up and uh, we'll leave this video there uh, and leave me to go and install a couple of operating systems and we'll do a couple of videos afterwards. So let's just check it out booting up. Okay, so we've got uh, power, HDMI and a USB keyboard there. Let's just... Uh, Turn that on. I hope you see the yeah, the NUC uh, logo, F2 to enter setup, and we've got this visual BIOS here, which is uh, it's pretty interesting actually. Um, allows you to <laughs> have a good visual view of the BIOS, but actually it's quite interesting because there's a lot of uh, performance uh, information here that um, it's going to help you tweak uh, tweak overclocking, I guess. The fan speed is uh, shown there. We've got. Um, boot device order. I haven't got to drive in here, so uh, what I'll do now is uh, put a drive in. Okay, just for giggles, uh, just uh, minutes after I closed down that video, I already had on a USB stick the Intel x86 Bay Trail version of um, Android 4.4, uh, I think revision 2 that they've uh, just recently uh, updated. So of course we've got Android running now. Um, on this desktop so um, of course this is pure Android what I want to do is just uh, let's just see if the um, 
Let's just see if the Ethernet, uh, Wi-Fi, turn the Wi-Fi on, because there's a Wi-Fi module in here. Let's see if we can actually get anything. Oh yeah, Wi-Fi is working. How nice is that? Come on. Let's just see. Let's just do, um, oh, let's just do Sun Spider. Oh, I should, um, do this on another video, but let's just check that it's uh, that it's working. Um, let's go to the uh, the browser, and uh, we'll go to the Sun Spider 1.01 test. And um, here it is. Um, 1.0. Hold on. Provecafe.org. Wait a minute. Doesn't look like the right. Um, doesn't look like the right sun spider. Hmm. <laughs> sun spider. Proofcafe.org. Is that where it is now? A little bit worried about that, but. Um, Version 1.0, we'll just run that through. I'm guessing that's going to be about. Oh, it doesn't look that brilliant. What do you reckon? 500? My guess is 500. I've done this so many times I can tell the speed just by looking at how it fast it runs through. 494! Oh, yes! Credit chippy. Uh, so, anyway, at least. At least that's working, and um, wow, we're up and running with Android uh, straight away. And um, if you want to know more about Android on the Nux, go to umpcportal.com. That's my website where it's uh, not working. The website's not working on this browser. Hmm. <laughs> Oh dear. Anyway, UFCPortal.com is uh, is my website. Look, there's the logo. That page at least is working. Why isn't the home page working? It is now. Just needed to load some stuff. Good. There you go. UFCPortal.com. Thanks for watching. My name's Chippy at Chippy on Twitter with the Intel NUC. Thanks for watching.